Tender openings. Uh, first notice is that the uh, meeting is being recorded um, by Zoom. Uh, this is the Northampton Conservation Commission meeting for the 13th of October, 2022. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the aid interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements, while meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings, or we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Uh, today's agenda includes uh, a request for determination of applicability to determine if deck construction within the riverfront of the Mill River is subject to the Northampton Wetlands Act or the Mass Wetlands Ordinance, this uh, on Main Street in Leeds. Uh, then a request for determination of applicability to determine if house construction within the Mill River uh, riverfront is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance, and this on Water Street in Leeds. And then a notice of intent for remediation of contaminated soil and bank stabilization, this at the Cutlery Building and Associated Land. Uh, since we don't have any uh, minutes, let me first ask if there's any general public comment that is separate from uh, any of the cases we're gonna be looking at today. If not, uh, let's move first to uh, request for determination of applicability to determine if deck construction within the riverfront of the Mill River is subject to the Wetlands Ordinance or the Wetlands Act. Uh, this uh, applicant is Margot Welch, 220 Main Street in Leeds. Um, who's here to speak to that? Is there anyone here for the application for the uh, uh, 220 Main Street Leeds uh, um, RDA application? Uh, this is Margaret Welch. Can you hear me? Ah, yes. Sorry, right. my, my picture is frozen, but I guess you can hear me. So that's good. My, audio, my video is frozen, but OK. All right, very good. Um, we've seen the uh, application. You want to give us a summary, please? Um, sure. So. Um, I'm an attorney in Northampton and the contractor asked me to assist the homeowners, which are um, Margaret Araj and Michael McDonald, who are having their contractor, uh, Lewis Montgomery, uh, do additional work at their home. He's um, completed a, he remodeled a garage and outside the garage, they wish to add um, a deck with stairs. And so that, um, that work is what is in front of you. So it's an eight by 10 deck that would fit within corners of um, the building that exists. And so no part of the deck would go farther out than the farthest plane of the current um, home structure. But it's a pretty simple um, project. I would describe a deck and stairs and um, I uh, submitted sketches with it. And I don't yeah. know if yeah, Sarah- Yeah, we've seen you, this, we've okay. seen the sketches. And yes. then and photos too, so that you could see yes. the air area and where the construction will happen. So we feel it's pretty straightforward, but um, I can't, I think that would summarize the project. Okay, uh, questions from commissioners? <clears throat> I've looked it over and it, it doesn't present any uh, concerns for me. Thanks, Paul. How high off the ground is the uh, uh, new deck gonna be? Um, it is a little bit of a drop from the current first floor door of the home. So I think it's probably three feet up off and the ground. What, and what would be, uh, Jen, go ahead. Oh, I was just wondering what the deck is gonna be constructed of. And if you know what the spacing between the boards of the deck are gonna be. And then, sorry, I have a third last technical question. Is there going to be any disturbance of the soil under the deck other than for the um, posts? Um, so your first question, I believe it's gonna be um, um, tech or um, that Trex material um, yeah. that's used. Mm -hmm. And the, um, let me see my um, application because I'm forgetting the name of the, of the building, um, how you describe the, footings, but it will be hand excavated and 
dug because it's such a tight space you can't even get machinery back there anyway but it will be um, excavated for the um, three I think it's two, or two um, footing pilings that you need to create um, and otherwise there wouldn't be any disturbance of the ground um, other than for um, the footings um, and then yeah. was there a question I forgot. Was there a third question I forgot? Yeah, or just if you have any sense of sort of the spacing between the deck boards, like if the, I guess my my main question is, is the deck going to be permeable at all to water? Um, I think it's going to be fairly typical construction with that trek. So the, you know, the, the boards um, join up, but there's enough spacing so that the rainwater can pour through. Um, yep, Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Can I just the, go ahead. Um, I think the um, substructure is going to be built out of pressure treated lumber. Uh, and so I appreciate the concern about catching any of the shavings that would come from cutting on the site so they don't contaminate the soil. Right. That's a, a good point, Paul, that if, if uh, the uh, material is uh, is pressure treated for the vertical members um, and the understructure. I think the trek would just be the surface, um, but the uh, yeah. uh, if the, the cutting would have to be done in a way that any um, sawdust and shavings and so forth from uh, treated wood would be uh, contained. Yeah, okay. that was my only, I mean, I thought the description covered my concern there. And, and what's the material underneath? Is it going to be uh, gravel or just left to, I, I, at three feet, there probably won't be enough sunlight to actually grow uh, grass or, or uh, even weeds. I, I didn't hear speak of any um, of anything that would happen underneath. So I think once the deck gets um, installed, it would just be um, the dirt and left left in that in that state. Yeah, no, as long as it's uh, can, um, water can be absorbed into the soil, that's uh, the main consideration for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions from commissioners? Uh, I've got no concerns. My big one was uh, um, just how the excavation was gonna be done, but uh, it's gonna be hand excavated. I don't have any concerns. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Sarah, any comment? Uh, my only question was whether the, the stairs are leading to an area that's already utilized as part of the lawn or if there's any plans to change any any way that the lawn area will be used. Um, the stairs are leading up to the deck. Um, they're kind of flush with the plane of the building. So I think it's just so that they could access the deck if they're in the rear. Um, I don't think it's to, I don't think it's to make greater use of the lawn. I was out there and there isn't really a lot of space. So I think it's just have an ex, have the additional access point to your deck from in, accessing it from your home and then also accessing it from walking around the house and onto the deck. I think but, Sarah's question is, um, is if it's going down to an already disturbed and including lawn area rather than intruding into some currently not disturbed area. Um, it will be just descending onto the current lawn area. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, any questions from members of the public? If not, it's an RDA, so we don't need to close a hearing. Um, uh, someone want to make a, a motion uh, for uh, indicating that this will not have, have a negative impact. It is within a resource area, but it won't have a negative impact. Will not dredge, fill, or alter. Um, so, want to, someone want to make it? Uh, trying to see, Sarah, sure. which which box? Uh, negative two. Negative two. Okay. Okay. Box. Can I ask yeah. a quick procedural sure. question? Sure, Jen, can, go ahead. Can we include a condition like the pressure treated sawdust being removed in an RDA or no? Yeah, there are, we do have some standard. Uh, sort of basic construction conditions. So making sure that any of the plastic or pressure treated shavings are, are captured. Okay. Awesome, great. Good. Thank you. Good, include that. Um, and so uh, a, a motion to uh, check box two and uh, uh, 
uh, indicate that it will not create um, uh, any negative impact, not dredge, fill, or alter. I move so that. Move. Okay, now second. Okay. Made and seconded. Any further Good. discussion? No. If not, all in favor, Sarah, you need a roll call? We do. Uh, Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you. All right. And then we are just past 540, so we can move on to the next case. Thank you. Thank um, you, I'm going to leave. Thanks. Okay, good enough. Uh, request for determination of applicability to determine if house construction within the riverfront of the Mill River is subject to the Wetlands Ordinance or the Wetlands Act. This at 99 Water Street. Uh, who's here to address that? I am. Hi, you want to give us a bit of a summary? Uh, well, yeah, we're going to build a single family residence. Um, it's an infill lot, so that's, it's not the first house in the neighborhood. There's uh, plenty of other houses. Um, uh, what else would what, what you need to know? Um, I haven't I, been through this process, so I'm not really sure what you... Sure. No. Um, so there's uh, a, a part of it, uh, of the construction will be within the riparian zone, with, within a couple hundred feet of the... Yeah, the, the front zone. half of the but house is... But I, I, I get the impression that if you were to move it back so that there wouldn't be any encroachment, uh, then you'd have to be dealing with some substantial trees and so forth? Uh, a, a steep slope. A steep slope, I see. Yes. Mm. Any other questions from commissioners? No, I, I took a look at it. And I mean, I mean, Google Earth is great, and then I drove out there because uh, both of the this one and the last one like are just right across the river from each other practically. Right. Um, I, I have no con concerns because you know the house, and then there's a street in front of it, and then there's another house between it and, yeah. and the river, so I'm comfortable. But uh, as long as they do uh, appropriate erosion control or self control on the site, it'll, it'll be fine. Of course. I did have a question, just that on the drawing that we got, there was um, in erosion control straw wattle that looked to me like it was not on the property. I was just wondering if you could address um, that. Well, or... it said uh, to, to contain the work zone. Oh, the sewer line is across the street. So I assume that digging for the sewer would be inside the work zone. So I put the straw, the, the erosion control on the other side of the sewer excavator. Is that not right? I'm, I'm having trouble visualizing what you're describing. So 99 Water Street is on the opposite side. It's not That's on the river side, it's right. on across the street. But the sewer line that we need to tie into is on the river side of the road. So I put the, the erosion control uh, on the on the river side of the road on, uh -huh. on my on my sketch. I think I'd prefer that it be on the front of the property, given that the bulk of the work is going to be right. on the property, okay. and that, that you protect um, when you have to excavate for the sewer line, you protect that separately. Because otherwise, the sediment is going to be running across the street and and in, yeah, and potentially into any uh, storm drains and things like that. Okay. So contain it on site to the extent possible. I have a quick question. Is the uh, house to be built being located on the exact location of the previous house? I don't know. I don't know where the, the previous house was. I don't have any any knowledge of where it was. Okay. It. I mean, it does seem as though uh, not um, impinging on any more um, areas than the existing disturbed condition. So it seems to be contained within that area. Yes. It didn't look on the drawings like there was a lot of options laterally for where you could position this. Kind of shoehorned in yeah. there. Yes. Any yeah, other our, questions from commissioners? Or comments, Mandy? It's 100 foot mark anyway, so. No, I have no concerns. Okay. I have a last question. So mm -hmm. would the sewer line tie in then be, is it, does that go through somebody else or would that come back to us through a separate? 
application? So that would be done entirely within the, the roadway. Yeah, yeah okay. If that work is needed to be done uh, subsurface. Okay. Right. Great, thank you. And uh, unless the uh, prior home was on a septic system, it, there's probably some kind of existing connection under the road anyway. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Alan, is the foundation completely removed? As far as I know, there's nothing visible above ground. Did you I don't me? want to interject, but I was told in the, the process of purchasing it that it was fully removed. Uh -huh. so, so you're the, uh, the new owner, the new buyer? Yes, yeah, hopefully, right. yeah. Well, I am, but yes, hopefully I can build. <laughs> right. Um, the, and um, uh, one thing that we uh, it wasn't clear from the drawing, since it was uh, kind of a hand drawing uh, rather than a professional um, uh, plan that are there any substantial uh, trees that are going to be removed um, toward the back part of the property? Uh, no, 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 no more trees to come down. Okay. But they, they have come down recently, right? Like there was a clearing very recently on the property, on the slope. Uh, before I was involved okay. in the project. I just, I live a block away, so I walk by it every day with my dog. <laughs> I think it was this spring or something, mm -hmm. but it was a fairly substantial, at least sort of relative to the property itself, mm -hmm. not in the world. Yeah, there were um, trees removed in the back outside of um, like a bunch because it's going to be a fully electric house, um, solar panels. So the trees came down for the solar panels. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, again, it's an RDL. Any questions from members of the public or comments? Uh, if not, since it's an RDA, we do not need to close uh, a hearing. Um, someone want to make a motion um, that, uh, and this would be a negative determination also box two, that it's uh, uh, within a jurisdictional area, at least part of the construction was within a jurisdictional area, uh, but it will not remove dredge, fill, or alter. Um, someone want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. Any and further discussion? We can add that the erosion control will be brought onto the property. That's true. That, yep. uh, with that, with that added, added condition, correct. Thank you. If not further discussion, all in favor? Sarah, roll call. Randy? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. All right, good luck, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, notice of intent for remediation of contaminated soil and bank stabilization. Uh, the, the cutlery building and uh, land upstream from it. Um, who's here to uh, address that? I will. <clears throat> um, are, are we ready for it? Yep. We got, okay. We, we, we were at 550 and that's the uh, allotted time. All it, right. Uh, my name is Alan Verson, B-E-R-S-O-N. I'm a partner of Cutlery Building Associates, which is the owner of the property in question and before you and uh, the applicant. Um, I'm here with three other people that I'll briefly introduce. Uh, introduce Barry Fogel is our environmental lawyer. He works out of Boston. Uh, he formerly worked for DEP in the Western region and um, achieved the academic honor of graduating from Northampton High School. And last weekend was uh, back for his 50th 
class reunion. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I don't know, maybe Barry could just wave his hand or say hello so you'll know who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, is he, is he here? Barry, you here? Yep, yeah, he's there. We can see him. Oh, oh I can't. OK, that's fine. Um, all right, Lyons Witten is, um, that's W-I-T-T-O-N, is an LSP, licensed site professional. That's the person who is delegated to actually enforce and implement, well, not enforce, but implement the uh, regulations, uh, the voluminous regulations under Chapter 21E. He's, uh, the period of his dealing with the cutlery is measured in uh, decades, I think, rather than years. Uh, Lyons, you can just say hello. Um, hello. And uh, there's Lyons. Um, and Joshua Surrett is with Epsilon Associates out of Maynard, Mass. Uh, Epsilon is an environmental permitting and consulting firm. And Josh specializes in wetland delineation and permitting and erosion, <clears throat> excuse me, control. So just as a brief introduction, since the other people, the people I just referred to will do the presentation, Cutlery Building Associates bought the property in 1984, 38 years ago. Um, the law under which we are obligated at this point or have been from the beginning, to uh, uh, deal with contamination, that is chapter 21E, was adopted the same year we bought the property, but the regulations, which basically are the body of the law, uh, were not issued for several years later. Um, so basically there were no environmental uh, regulations when we purchased it. Um, it turned out, however, unfortunately, the property was heav heavily contaminated. Uh, we were dealing with 100 years of industrial contamination by the Northampton Cutlery Company. Uh, we, over the years, rebuilt the buildings, which were literally falling down around us when we bought it, and dealt with the contamination closest to the building and on the bank of the river closest to the building. So that's now been closed out by DEP. Um, the, the land before the commission tonight is the wooded area to the north and upriver from the buildings, um, just north of uh, Valley Home Improvement. It's a long, narrow, uh, slightly triangular piece of land that goes up the river. Over the years, we made um, numerous efforts to uh, deal with the contamination and prevent erosion into the river. Unfortunately, we found that those efforts um, didn't last long enough. They were far from permanent. So at this point, I guess I'm at the age and it seems like the time to, <clears throat> to present a major serious effort to deal with the contamination um, in a permanent manner, which is completely different than what has occurred over the years. Um, the, so that's the application that's before you tonight. That is to, to do a permanent solution to the contamination and erosion and environmental contamination that exists in this wooded area. So the three people will the, take over the present the project. I just want to make one other point about uh, something that I'm sure will come up. Well, have you've gotten communication from a couple of abutters or interested parties about the chain link fence along Riverside Drive, saying that it's unattractive, it prevents public access and so on. Um, both those things are completely true. I would love to see it gone. Uh, it is unattractive and it does prevent public access. But as long as Cutlery Building Associates, Associates owns the property, 
the fence will remain there. Uh, we cannot be forced to provide a public park for the uh, access of whoever wants to. Uh, that would present numerous problems, particularly during the period of construction, which will take a year or two years. And even thereafter, uh, the, however, and this is important to emphasize, it is my hope that the fence will be temporary only, that if the co commission approves the application and the project is completed, that at that point, I am hopeful and the plan will hopefully be implemented to have the city acquire ownership and control of it. And it will become a public park, the newest public park in the city of Northampton that will provide uh, all the access and uh, availability to the public that is appropriate. And it could even hopefully be connected. There would be a walking path along the river, the whole length of the land and could even be connected to Maine's field at the field at the northerly end of the property. And we'll start a conversation with the city um, shortly after the commission takes action in the event that the commission approves the application. So that's my comments. Uh, at this point, I think Barry Fogel will uh, take over the presentation. Here we are. Uh, good evening. I wanted to um, follow on what Alan said. Um, this is a project that's being proposed and presented to you um, as a limited project under the DEP regulation at 310 CMR 10.533Q uh, to implement a remedy under Chapter 21E. Um, I'm sure you folks are very familiar with the limited project rules and, and um, the standards that apply. As Alan said, his objective here is to finally achieve a permanent solution. Um, he's obligated as the owner of the property or cutlery uh, associates, is obligated under the MCP, the DEP's Massachusetts contingency plan to achieve a permanent solution where feasible um, and if not, to maintain a temporary solution, which he has done for decades. Um, but to keep looking for a method to achieve a permanent solution. And as he said, his the ideal objective of maybe having this property be acquired by the city for public access requires that there be a condition of no significant risk through exposure to contaminated soils. So what Lyons Witten has done in developing a revised phase four remedy implementation plan that he has presented to Mass DEP, and that is the underlying plan for which the notice of intent has been submitted, is to find a way to take the steep slope along the Mill River, the bank, that despite best efforts at temporary solutions continues to slump because of the steep slope and to bring contaminated soils from the exposed areas back to the stockpile and put an engineered barrier over that and over the relaxed slope along the Mill River so that there is no opportunity for direct human exposure, and for that matter, for wildlife exposure to contaminated soils. So there are requirements under the limited project provision I cited to determine which, uh, if any of the performance standards for the various resource areas would not be met, and to implement best measures to provide as close as possible compliance. And we've done that. Um, as you'll, you've seen in the revised notice of intent, the two performance standards that can't be met here are 
<clears throat> to limit the amount of work in the riverfront area to the Mill River and to avoid um, stopping erosion of the bank to the Mill River. In normal, uncontaminated circumstances, the obvious goal would be to let the Mill River do its thing and erode soil and to let the bank of the Mill River erode. But what's eroding and what we want to stop from eroding is contaminated material. Um, so unfortunately, we need to break eggs to make an omelet, which means trees need to be cut, the slope materials need to be excavated and brought into the stockpile and capped. And the relaxed slope and the and the wall that was in place needs to be rebuilt. Um, you asked, and um, although we had an objection to the requirement to engage a third party reviewer to evaluate Lyons Witten's selection of a remedy, because there is specific language in the limited project provision that the Conservation Commission is not required to evaluate alternatives other than the one that the um, LSP has selected. We, we uh, agreed to that. You had OTO um, uh, do a third party review of the project. We was provided a response in great detail to their very detailed evaluation. And that's been before you now for several weeks. Um, so we um, are, and, and revised plans have been submitted to you showing the limits of work and the, the methods for the work. We understand and appreciate that it's complicated, um, but we have, Lyons is here tonight to answer questions you have. Um, and Josh Charette is here to speak to any of the wetlands Protection Act and Northampton Ordinance performance standards. Uh, but we are asking for your approval for this project as a limited project um, to authorize Alan to perform this work uh, and stabilize the bank and achieve a permanent solution for this contaminated area, which Alan did not cause. I mean, I, I view he, he is the party who is strictly liable under the MCP without regard to fault or causation. Um, and so he's taken on the responsibility um, as is required to do and is hoping that uh, we can answer your questions and, and uh, determine uh, how to achieve an approval for this project. So I don't know that we have any specific presentation to make because once we once we go down that um, slope, it's a slippery slope of getting into great detail. It's probably easier to to invite you to ask questions that any of the members of the commission may have uh, first and the public second, uh, and that'll probably lead us into some of the detailed information we have. If if Mr. Ch if the chair. Uh, and the members would prefer to follow a different approach, let us know, but it seems easiest at this point to at least um, answer questions, if, if you wouldn't mind going that route. I have a couple of questions, but let me first ask uh, if any of the other commissioners have questions. Jen? Um, I had a question about the tree cover, like the removal of the trees, kind of with concern towards the what OTO mentioned in their study, um, which I was thinking about before reading that report, just about the shade cover to the river. Um, I was a little confused and got a little bit lost on the schematics of, I know the top of the restored wall will be riprap and not growable area. Um, so I was a little, I would like to understand there was language in your responses to OTO's report about how it will become revegetated with multi-story vegetation um, naturally through the future, that it's only, it's going to be reseeded in either grass or a pollinator mix, but not planted. So I'm wondering where the 
bounds of that will be and how close that will actually be in sort of impacting the future shade on the river? Well, that's, that's a good question. So yes, the area where the um, engineered barrier will be covering the stockpile and remaining contaminated soil would not be allowed, if you will, to grow woody rooted vegetation that would uh, 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 impede the stability of that. But um, I think part of the answer was that given the substantial amount of canopy over the rest of the site and on both sides of the Mill River in this stretch, that the concern that OTO raised about the loss of the canopy from the largest trees um, is offset by the fact that the water of the Mill River will remain a cold water fishery. And this change in this part of the site will not have a more than negligible effect on the condition of the shading of the Mill River. I think that was the crux of the answer, but Lyons, you probably want to call up a, a site plan perhaps to- Yeah, to that would be helpful. That. Because there was point. some sort of conflicting language to me of not wanting to allow regrowth of woody vegetation close to the bank, which is exactly where we would want woody vegetation in terms of shade cover of the river. So yeah, I'd like to see on a schematic exactly where it will be allowed to be revegetated and exactly where it will not. Just for my understanding of kind of the more permanent impact, like not just in the short term, but in the long term of the shade cover of the property. Yeah, that's an excellent uh, question, obviously. So Lyons, why don't you call Sarah, if, if someone could allow me to share a screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'd be yeah. happy to pull up a plan One and second. demonstrate that. You should be all set. Okay. Can you all see a, a plan with a with my cursor running around on it? Yep. Okay. okay. Excellent. So this is the the red line around the is around the uh, area of permanent disturbance. Uh, that's our primary work zone. Um, to answer your question, this orange band closest to the river, this down over here from blue line to blue line is the Mill River. Um, down in this bottom left corner of the screen is Valley Home Improvement and the Mill River flows from the upper right to the lower left, Riverside Drive being over on this side. So this is the edge of the Mill River and this orange band is the area that will have riprap and it represents the area up to the 100 year flood elevation. And as we get further and further upstream, that's lower and lower on the bank. The purple lavender, Area above that will have turf mat and that will be seeded in the um, wildflower mix or the logging mix, whatever the commission deems best suited for this site. Um, either one of those would be fine for the project. The gray is the top of the levee. Once the slope is relaxed, that will have a gravel surface very similar to the surface that's there now. Um, this area down here is the stockpile. The existing stockpile comes to about here, uh, maybe a little further, maybe about to here, um, and is a couple of feet lower than what it will be at the end of this project, but the stockpile will occupy the same area it does now and a little bit more up to where the red line curves in. And all of that will also have the uh, wildflower and logging mix, uh, seed mixes on it. Um, this green dashed line outlines the, um, the IVW and 
that will continue to have vegetation and then everything on on the riverside drive side of this red line of the gravel surface on top of the levee uh, will be allowed to regrow whatever it wants to regrow. And is that also true to the bottom left above the red line? Uh, here? Yeah. That area will, yes, that area will be completely undisturbed. There will be no tree cutting. There'll be nothing happening there. Yep. And do you no know- No contractors allowed. Great. Do you know the length of the red line um, against the river, like from there to the top right corner or just a guess? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll break it down for you. There's a, in, at the upstream end, the retaining wall is tallest. It's roughly um, 12 to 15 feet high, depending where you are. And it is a vertical um, masonry stone wall. It has mortar between the stones. No lines. I think the question was from, nor from north to south, what's that length? Just yes, I, I understand. I understand it. So the mortared stone wall section runs to about where my cursor is, and it's 185 feet long. And then there is dry laid stone wall down to about where my cursor is now. That's, I believe, 240 some feet long. Um, and then the last 105 feet is the area where we propose to add a stone wall that is one stone high, not very high, um, but necessary to hold the toe of the slope and the riprap together um, as a unit. So that's probably 530 feet? 500 and roughly 540 feet, yes. Jen, if I can, Lyons, call up that photo, if you will, that from the panoramic from the river view that'll give an idea of current conditions. Yeah, there you go. Oh, so here's um, on the far left over here where my cursor is going back and forth is the vertical stone wall. This picture isn't taken in a place where you can see it very well, um, but starting where this light blue line is, is the beginning of the dry laid stone wall. So this is the upper section of the dry laid stone wall. And uh, you can see in this area here, the wall has failed and fallen over um, down onto the bank full bench. And the area above it eroded and the orange line outlines an area that we did um, straw blanket remediation and trying trying to hold the area together after it had already uh, the wall had already collapsed um, my prior experience here at the cutlery on this bank um, over the last 26 years or more um, says that that'll last a few years maybe three maybe four um, the straw will disappear and erosion will start all over again underneath the um, what's left of the blanket. So here's, um, here's another area here where the wall's fallen down. Uh, you can see the original height of the wall. This wall was built in 1860-ish. Um, so it's been around <laughs> 180 years. Here's an area where it fell down. Here's the original height again. Um, from where it starts being a dry laid wall, it's roughly six feet high um, at the upstream end. And by the time you get down to its downstream, its current downstream terminus, it's at roughly two feet high. And it, it gradually gets lower and lower and lower as, as it goes downstream. All, all that to say that all of that area, if you go back to the plan, um, 
So within the red line, trees can't be uh, they're tolerated in a sense from an environment from a 21e remedy standpoint. Yep, that's helpful visually. Yep. Thank you very much. Can I this is Paul. Can I just follow up with a question about that? <laughs> the uh, loss of 96 trees will deprive the stream of um, some shade, but which which direction is the sun hitting the river? Because my sense is that you've already addressed the issue of not warming up the temperature of the water. Um, will the removal of the trees significantly change the water temperature? So, Lyons and Josh, whatever you, if you let Josh, uh, I'll, Lyons, I'll, I'll start lower, by saying. Hold on, Lyons, one second. Lower the drawing so you can see the north arrow up there in the left. Oh, okay. So there's the north arrow, Paul. So <laughs> east is down to the bottom right and west is to the left. Yep. Okay. So, so you know, you've got the sun going over the top, yep. but um, this is a very deep section of channel of the river for those who have visited the site. And it's um, it's shaded anyway by even the, I mean, lions will show that photo. There are many trees at the height of both of these banks. Um, and the water flows through, like you can see over at the far left side of this photograph, the number of trees right down to the river yes. on both sides. So the, the hot summer afternoon sun comes from the other side of the river and. Okay, all right. You know, when I walked the property several weeks ago, um, <clears throat> I kept uh, thinking, how does the soil that's contaminated get prevented from leaching into the river? And your plan requires the removal of the trees and it, re it requires the removal of stumps, which destabilize the slope, but you can't ease the slope unless you remove the stumps. And so it, it starts to fit together for me from that point of view. Exactly. I will, I will say we went around and around and around to trying to find a solution yeah. to these issues that did not involve cutting trees and removing stumps. I understand but, that. But to relax the slope, yeah. um, you're leaving stumps several feet up in the air and it, it, it just doesn't, you have to work around all the roots and it, it just doesn't yeah. work. Right. And to Paul, to put it in MCP speak, um, you, an engineered barrier requires that it be permanent. And in fact, there will be a requirement for periodic inspections of this to make sure that it remains stable and unexposed. Well, that I think is kind of unresolved at this point, how periodic should they be? And I think we were hoping perhaps that the inspections might happen a little more frequently. Lyons, what's the MCP requirement for that? The um, the inspections that have happened for the last no 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 well, after the, after we, the we have done we have done annual AUL inspections on this part of the property and the other portions of the property okay. since 2010 <clears throat> and those will continue into the future. Um, they have to do with the stability of the engineered barrier, the integrity of the fencing, and signposting um, and in 2006, when we did some substantial work on other portions of the property, there were some wetland related inspections that also happened annually. Um, and those have since not been required for four or five years and, and then stopped. But there is an annual AUL inspection that I do, um, have done for the last 10 or 12 years, and those will continue into the future. I'm just going to quickly come back to uh, the vegetation and then we can move on from that. But to, is there a reason why you're not planting any trees along that section that is uh, behind the wall, but, but uh, north of? Um, the, uh, the zone where you're going to be laying down the uh, contaminated soil? 
which color area, Randy, do you think, which one? So it, it's, uh, hang on, let me pull up the back. I can barely Sorry. see it on my iPad. No, the bottom um, line but, is that everything inside the red is going to have contaminated soil under it. Right, but I'm, I'm thinking that there's an area that's um, to the east of the red and north of the stockpile. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's, so the that, where, that's the isolated wetland where yeah, but, but further, further up, there's an area there where you can see the trees that are coming out. Is there is there a reason why you're just um, hitting with with a wildflower or grassland mix rather than in, um, dropping trees in? Is my cursor in the right place now? Yep. Yep. We are not cutting trees in that area. Oh, okay. So those trees are going to stay. Okay. These trees will stay. There will be log mats temporarily placed between trees in the area between the red line and this black dashed line. Okay. We're not cutting the trees there. Okay, good, thanks. Other questions from commissioners? Nope. My concern is uh, on a specific reading of, in order to um, allow uh, the performance standards that would otherwise apply not to be met by regarding this as a limited project, the commission has to conclude um, that no uh, better alternative exists. And we haven't been presented with an alternative analysis that we would usually expect. Um, there are a couple of times in response to the third party review where you said this is infeasible or this is financially infeasible, but without uh, an articulation of what an alternative plan might be and why it's not feasible. So that, that's a, a general, uh, normally to allow something, uh, especially something of uh, substance like this, a major undertaking. Uh, to uh, be regarded as a, a limited project, we have required the presentation of an alternatives analysis, and I don't see that in your application. Could um, Sarah? Can I be? Can I share my screen? Okay, thank you. Um, let me see if this. Uh... Yeah, you should be able to now. All right. Uh, yeah, I want to do that. So this is the language of um, 1053.3Q. This is the limited project provision for assessment monitoring remediation under 21E. Um, and it says where it's needed to achieve no significant risk, there are no practical alternatives. And there's this discussion here. And the regulation says but Barry, can you go back up a little bit? I think you're so under A and B, I think is what Kevin is referring to. So the altern and what the alternatives analysis is required. Right. Work. But this language right here, a comprehensive remedial action alternative that is selected in accordance with the these provisions of the MCP shall be deemed to have met the requirements of 1053 3Q1. So this language right here is the provision. So Lyons filed his phase four comprehensive remedial action alternative according to those provisions. And so that's shall be deemed language is that that, that is the alternative without having to, to otherwise address section one. We asked DEP to confirm that and they said, oh, we don't give opinions about things during, with regard to pending applications pending before local conservation commissions. Now, as Alan said, I once worked with Mass DEP. I was the regional director in the central regional office. That's not a policy of the department. That was a position stated by the folks in the Western regional office this year, just for this project. Wayne Biden asked us to 
allow the commission to hire OTO to evaluate the alternative. We objected to that from a legal standpoint, from a practical standpoint, we didn't mind having OTO do that. Barry, yeah. I would add that our city solicitor felt strongly that the commission was well within its rights to require that. Yeah, I never heard from the city solicitor and I frankly have a reason to disagree with that individual, but such as it is, despite the fact that we believe that was unnecessary, it happened, Kevin. OTO performed a review of our, the selected alternative and didn't question it. Um, Normally what we would have regarded as an alternatives analysis would be uh, a fairly uh, detailed description of option A, option B, option C, we could have done this, we could have done that. Here's the relative impact, the square foot impact, uh, the uh, risk or benefit. Um, and then we can consider what are those alternatives. And it, that's our, our practice as a commission over the last decade plus has been to look at that as an alternatives analysis, um, not the brief response to a third party, but an actual development of an alternative. Well, have you have you had that done for a 21E remediation project under this provision? We've had it done for various projects. Um, uh, this this one, I, and I have to say, what you're presenting may in fact be the best solution. Um, and I have been respectful of the work that's been done. When 30 years ago, uh, my kids were going to karate um, at the cutlery building and I would be outside and there was in that lower part just around the cutlery building, nothing would grow back then. It was so toxic and, and things were so damaged. And so I'm respectful of the work that's been done over the years. Um, I'm just relating my understanding of what we as a commission have done historically and have required of people in your position to say, hey, if you're gonna say this is the best alternative, for a limited project, we have to be able to see in a reasonable sense, we understand what those alternatives might have been and why they weren't the best. No, I'm not, I'm not disputing that, but if you look at any of the other limited project provisions under 1053.3, none of them has the language that I just read you in, in subsection Q. The reason DEP and its wetlands regulations put that in was they specifically did not want conservation commissions to second guess licensed site professionals who are certified and licensed by Mass DEP to make the determination and render the opinion about what is a the, the appropriate alternative. So that when when chapter 21E took effect, or the MCP did, and licensed site professionals became the, met, the determining party for remediation, DEP amended the limited project provision to put that language in. And so it was specifically intended to not require conservation commissions to ask of licensed site professionals, why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do it that way? That would undo the chapter 21E rubric. And I'm not proposing that we uh, as a commission redesign the project. I'm just relating that the way we have always operated is that uh, Lyons has done an analysis and has considered a range of alternatives um, and decided this is the best one. We just wanna know the logic behind that and what those alternatives were. And, and understanding that OTO said, we're not challenging the selection of the alternative, we want these following questions about whether there are other ways to perform this alternative. I actually will take issue with your characterization of our response as being a brief or short response. OTO took several months to prepare their questions and we responded in great detail to every one of their questions. I have to say that I think that we've done, we've gone above and beyond to evaluate if there are other ways to do this, and there aren't. It's in your record now. That OTO back, the Q&A with OTO is much more than I've ever seen on a remedial project being done under a limited project provision. Um, we're, we take at great expense to Allen. Um, there was a, a very robust exchange with the OTO folks 
um, in, in response to their questions. I, I'm not sure what more we might have done to address the remedy and how it's been designed. Uh, the, if you have a specific question about some other element of the design, but um, you know the the phase four remedial action alternative report, I believe Lyons was included with the notice of intent. Um, so you actually have Lyons' great exploration, if you will, of alternatives in that, and and in the OTO report, they actually concluded and made a very explicit statement that they believe that this alternative was selected in accordance with the requirements. I don't know what else and what more we might have done. Uh, and, and articulation for us about what alternatives were considered and why they were regarded as less desirable than the one presented. That's how we've always operated. I mean, Lyons, do you want to point out where in the phase four or where you, you know, the other alternatives that were evaluated in your selection of this remedy? Is that, that it sounds like what they're asking? Um, I can do that. Um, I'm not, I don't, I'm I don't not, believe, I'm not suggesting that this is only a, 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 a verbal exercise in tonight's hearing, uh, but that uh, we normally, would have in front of us um, uh, a, a plan for, okay, here's option a, B, C, and D, and why we stuck with option A is, is, is the following, but we haven't seen B, C, and D. And normally what we would say, and maybe we'll say that at the end of this meeting is, uh, come back to us when you have B, C, and D, because this is not a by right exercise. This is a, uh, uh, we have to, determined that it's permissible to not adhere to performance standards. And there are conditions in the past that we've used to determine that by saying, oh yeah, we understand this is arguably the best alternative. We're not second guessing. We just wanna know what the alternatives were to understand the logic. Otherwise we're taking on the basis of faith that, oh, well, here, here's what the applicant says is best. And it could be that it's entirely true and it could be that it's just a shortcut it's cheaper it's easier um, and unless we hear the arguments we don't know the answer to that can i jump in kevin with a brief comment sure paul another way of coming at this might be to ask there's a sincere attempt to create a permanent solution here but with the existing proposal what would you consider to be some potential vulnerabilities to the plan, threats to the permanency of it. And that might constitute uh, helpful information for us as to why this is the most defensible proposal. Let me start with that. There are no vulnerabilities. That's why the licensed site professional is putting his certificate and license at stake and giving an opinion that this will be permanent. The reason he, Lyons, I think you explained it that you you sought to achieve the a stable slope without cutting down even further and flattening the bank. You went to what what two to one slope from the current very steep slope. That's and, correct. And selected that alternative as the least intrusive to the contours. But I there think is, there is no other alternative to make it more permanent. Perhaps the commission, um, perhaps it would be helpful to understand that the phase four um, remedy implementation plan came out of, is derived out of a, um, a review that's done of the temporary solution on this piece of property, um, every five years we're required to do a, re a review of potential remedial alternatives. Um, we did it in 2016, we did it again in um, 2021, and in the 2021 review of remedial alternatives, we looked at no further action, we looked at monitored natural attenuation, which is much different, 
We looked at stabilization and disposal of metals. Um, we looked at stabilization of all metals and leaving them, leaving them on site. We looked at excavation and offsite disposal. And we looked at an engineered uh, barrier. And the last one we looked at was phytoremediation because we'd looked at it years ago. Um, and none of those were deemed um, to be feasible in 2021. But shortly thereafter, we realized that the um, retaining wall was failing um, based on the annual inspection that I've done every year back and we looked at it in at a time of year when it was where those photographs were taken it was very clear what was going on um, and so we selected a some engineered barrier and some stabilization of metals and leaving them on site two of the alternatives we've looked at in 2021 we used portions of either one to construct the phase four remedy implementation plan that has been submitted to Mass DEP. And in the engineering design of that, we looked for ways that were less impactful, but could not come up with one. There were, uh, in response to the OTO review, uh, there were, uh, uh, and you just mentioned the uh, uh, stabilization and removal option. Um, and uh, your answer to that was it's financially infeasible. Um, that doesn't address whether, in fact, from our perspective, how much something costs isn't uh, uh, a primary consideration. It's uh, what the benefits might be. Would that be um, beneficial in, in addition to uh, what you're proposing? And so uh, again, my, my position is, I don't know if we know enough as a commission um, without seeing something in writing as part of a plan um, rather than just having, oh yeah, we, uh, we, we decided. Um, well, not all of us are expert and not meaning to challenge the expertise, just having an understanding and a way to follow the logic of here's what we came up with. Uh, yeah, we chose option A, but B, C, and D were considered. And to have that as part of a written plan that we can look at and evaluate seems to help us lead, lead help us lead ourselves to say, huh, okay, we can allow you not to meet the performance standards that would otherwise be required. That's how we've always operated. I, I, I don't understand why that's problematic. It's problematic for two reasons. One is you already do have that. The phase four report has been part of the notice of intent and it's not in language you can't understand. So to the extent that we provided you with the phase four back in March, when the notice of intent was filed, it's been available to you for nine months, eight months. And second of all, the reason is because it's the very thing you just said, and I will repeat it, and I've never heard I've never seen anything from the city solicitor to back up what Sarah said or what Wayne said. It is very clear to me, and I'm sorry to be blunt and forceful, but the very reason for that language I read you from the limited project provision is to not have conservation commissions second guessing LSPs. And the part that we did address additionally with OTO was were there other ways to do the project to implement it that might have less environmental impact? And, and that was in gory detail with OTO. They, they did not second guess or review the LSP's decision, but they said, could you do it this way? Could you do it that way? Could you do it this way? Could you do it that way? And we answered that. So I have to say the record before you gives you exactly what you're asking for in great detail. Well, I may have to go back and review that because I don't recall that from my uh, time back in March, but- uh, uh, I ask Kevin- Sure, Paul. I just wonder if the alternative plans 
are actually uh, embedded in the language as issues have been addressed. And it's just, it might be a formatting problem in which uh, they haven't all been extracted from their embedded context and put into a straightforward document uh, <clears throat> referring back to the relevant sections so that uh, <clears throat> everything may have well been addressed, but it's not clearly formatted this time around to stand out as one coherent set of objections or alternatives. I just, uh, I, I'm getting the sense that the information may be there and it's embedded and it's just not uh, formatted in a way that is um, congruent with our precedents. I, again, I, you know, I think it's probably not because in all of the other limited project provisions, you, they're all very simple compared to 20, 21E remedy. <laughs> um, you know, none of the other limited projects, you know, in terms of how you might, you know, if, if, ever, if ever source or national grid is running a transmission line underground, you might ask them about whether they want to do, you know, uh, drilling beneath a stream rather than crossing it in, in the dry. I mean, th those kinds of things are pretty straightforward. It's A or B. When you're in the realm that we're in of a very complex soil remediation um, of this quantity, of this magnitude, it's, there are not, you know, Lyons has tried stabilization on the steep slope. It has not worked. The other alternative is to excavate an enormous amount of soil and dispose of it off site. There's just it's it's beyond feasible from an economic standpoint. This hey. is not, and th and that's substantiated. And so it's really all about how to get to <clears throat> a stable slope with the least relaxing, if you will. You know that's the word Lions uses, taking the least amount off the, the bank putting it into the stockpile and stabilizing the site without and, and ending the erosion of contaminated soil into the river, ending the exposure of wildlife to contaminated soils on the bank of the river once and for all. Could, and, could you point to where in the documentation the financial infeasibility of excavate, like removing the soil from the site is covered in any detail? lines if you want to go to the phase four but did you have a you had a um i know you had a quote for soil removal excavation and disposal at an appropriate facility of some enormous amount per ton the alternatives analysis that i talked about earlier is not embedded in the in the phase four it's in the five-year periodic review of the temporary solution that we produced in February of 2021. I'd be happy to send that to the commission. The cost of, where is it? The cost of um, stabilization and disposal of what we think is the total volume of impacted soil is one and a quarter million dollars far beyond the capacity of Cutlery Building Associates to, to handle. And were we to do that, we would have to take out all of the levy and the entire stockpile, which means all of the trees on the river side of the stockpile would also have to come down because the soil, the metals impacted soil under the stockpile reaches a depth of about six feet. So you got six by 300 feet by 40 feet wide. All of that soil would have to be put in trucks. And at this point, the closest facility to accept all of that, um, I believe is in central Ohio. So that's um, a huge undertaking and would disturb far more of the site than the current proposal. And that's an would, ex, sorry, Jen, that's an excellent example of what we would normally see in writing as part of the plan. 
Yeah, the, uh, that, we, oh. our, our charter as a commission is to exercise some judgment, not just to say, oh, a licensed professional says this is right, therefore it's right. We're supposed to take a look at that stuff and consider it. Yeah, that's for me. Happy, very, oh, I'd be happy to send you a copy of the five year review. It's, and can I just clarify that it would require more disturbance and more tree cutting in the short term, but if the soil, if the contaminated soil was removed, we would not have the unvegetated area in a permanent sense in the long run. Is that correct? Well, you, you'd have, you still would have, if you wanted to restore the contours, you'd have to then add the cost of bringing in fill and material. Otherwise you'd have, instead of a bank, you'd have a flat area. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, the benefit of this alternative is that um, Lions, I don't know if you show the the cross section version that has the flat um, uh, top of the capped area. Hold on. But as he's doing that, in in Alan's comments, he made the point that you know to the extent that. Um, Yeah, so yeah, you had exactly. That's what I'm looking for. There's another image. Maybe on one of the other sheets. Oh, I you know, the one that had this, yeah. this is this is what you're looking for. Yeah. Hold on. Once this is stable and there's no exposure with this barrier, that flat surface. I mean, this is not to scale, obviously, but that provides the perfect surface for a walking path. And you know, now that this would be safe for public exposure, the chain link fence could come down and the city could connect this part of the river to the mains field if there was a way to get through the property in between. Um, and that's one of the benefits of this alternative. No, please understand, I'm, I'm not trying to argue against this alternative. I'm just trying to make sure that the commission can do its job. Yeah. And our, our primary objective is protecting the resource. So that's why I, the recreational benefits are um, important to have as context, but just knowing a little bit like that context about the alternative feasibility, it was very helpful for me in sort of understanding. And I think like Kevin is saying, um, a condensed version of that would be very helpful in making the determination. If I may ask, when you say protecting the resource, which, which resource? Jurisdictional which wetlands resources under the wetlands protection. No, right. So what we have is a contaminated, a heavily contaminated and eroding riverfront area bank. And the idea is to eliminate the contamination and stabilize the erosion for the purposes of protecting other non wetland resource area values like keeping contaminated sediment soil from getting into the Mill River and down to Paradise Pond and so forth. I mean, there's a okay. lot of benefits. So the, you, what you have are degraded resource areas right now. And the once again, I'm, uh, we're not questioning that this may be the optimal uh, solution. We're just uh, stating that the commission does exist to, for hormone function. We have to see what the alternatives are. I will add one other thing. You know, when we first communicated with Sarah, when we filed the notice of intent and wanted to try to establish a public hearing, the first public hearing, we were told that the commission likes to resolve, you know, handle these projects or in one hearing. We anticipated this would not be a project that would be reviewed in one hearing. And so our goal actually had been to have this discussion back in you know, earlier this year. And Barry, uh, those initial plans also included a parking lot and other activities that were not part of the remediation activities. And through working with staff that ideally would have happened prior to a submittal, 
we were able to figure out that that wasn't something that made sense and and work towards a little bit of progress. You know, I'm, we we're just asking for a little bit of cooperation from you to make sure that the commission is doing its job in protecting the the jurisdictional wetlands resources. We're not suggesting we're not going to cooperate. What we're suggesting is that there's a lot of reading material, and so to the extent that you want to go back and reread the materials that have been submitted um, and, and confirm what we're saying, which is those evaluations are in there. Lions what, can provide the... What I'd suggest is that uh, you put that in a, a, a form that's accessible and digestible by the commissioners, and that we come back at a later date and review once we have a more complete picture. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to talk to Alan about whether he wants to, to um, rewrite everything that's already been submitted. <laughs> Um, but Lyons had just indicated that some of the alternatives he just presented were not presented to the commission previously. I mean, just because something was included in MCP documentation doesn't mean that the commission has had any availability to it to, to date. No, and I, and I will, you know, at risk of belaboring the point, I will make the point again that we believe that that's not a requirement under this particular limited project provision. But having heard you say that you don't want to abide by that provision and you want to look deeper into the selection of the alternative, despite that language in the limited project provision, we'll give you some additional materials. I disagree with your characterization. I think uh, the commission exists to exercise judgment and we need to have the information with which to do so. I mean, and, part of the general limited project provisions are consideration of the magnitude of the alteration and the significance of the project site um, to the interests of the Wetland, Wetlands Protection Act. And you know, this is presenting a lot of disturbance and it may well be, as Kevin said, that this is the best alternative and, the, um, and, and will protect the interests of the act, but the commission doesn't really have enough information to be able to make that call with what's in front of it at the moment. So uh, if there's some, uh, work to be done by the applicant, I would propose, uh, to come back with the background. It seems like work you've already done, some of which you've already presented to us, uh, just to uh, cut and paste it into a format where we can see, yeah. as I've discussed several times, oh, here are A, B, C, and D, and here's why we're going with A. Uh, and that the A, B, C, and D didn't measure up. Shouldn't be that hard, I don't think. Let's hope not. <laughs> Um, we will try to make it as clear and simple as we can. Please. Any further? So we're, we're not talking about the next meeting. Uh, Barry, you're not available anyway. So we would ask for it to be put on for the first meeting in November. What are, what Is that are correct? So that would be November 10th. And then Randy, uh, who had to step out, but we'll re review the uh, the video of the portion that he missed, also indicated that he wouldn't be able to do October 27th anyway. Okay, so November 10th. So Lyons, would that work? Yes, that's fine. Okay. All right. So uh, before we uh, close the hearing, um, any questions or comments from anybody uh, on the commission or uh, with the applicant? Any questions or comments from members of the public? Um, I have one. John Sinton, I see. Start my video. Oh, here I am. <clears throat> Um, I represent the Mill River Greenway initiative, um, and we have sent a letter in, which I won't repeat. Uh, We've seen it. And um, I would also like to let you know that uh, Rick Hudson, who is in London, some of us have to be in London, <laughs> as uh, asked uh, to include a letter that he has supporting essentially what the commission has said, which is has to do with alternatives 
and he has requested that there be uh, that it be held over to next month's meeting. Uh, my own uh, view of this is that we are just dying to get remediation done, and we really applaud Mr. Verson's uh, willingness to step up to the plate. We're deeply indebted, and we're indebted to the commission. I think the commission is terrific. Um, just to address Mr. Fogel on this, uh, not to um, John, I have to say, we asked the public to only address comments to the commissioners. Okay. Not to Mr. Fogel. No, we, we uh, okay. avoid getting into debate. Um, I don't mind. Okay. Hearing no, 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 I'm not getting. He has to say through the chair, though, Mr. Chairman, if he can speak to you and I'm ready to listen. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I started uh, life as an environmental consultant in 1970, doing the very first environmental assessments for the Corps of Engineers, and I've been through the wars. And so I understand where folks are coming from. Um, and uh, I believe that Kevin's request is eminently reasonable that it's just very simple to lay out the alternatives, uh, including the without alternative. Um, and since the public uh, really is in, involved in this, it needs to be clear and open. And it's, it's pretty simple stuff to do. And so I would hope that you could simply do that because Mr. Verson needs uh, needs a lot of support, uh, and he's got a lot of support in this community, and so I applaud you all. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Any other comments or questions from the public? If not, a motion to close the hearing. Uh, to, so to oh, continue. The first, a motion to continue to the seventh of, of November. Uh, November 10th at Sorry, 10th we'll just do 530. I don't think there's anything else on the agenda at the moment. No moved. And a second? Second. <clears throat> moved and seconded. All in favor, Sarah? Uh, Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right. And we do only have five commissioners, so three is a... Is a quorum, so we can do that. Um, and now, um, uh, oh, we haven't quite closed the, the hearing yet, so. What is your deadline typically for circulating materials to commissioners, Sarah? Like, do you, like is it Thursday before or Friday? When do you have your package sent out? Thursday before. All right, so our goal- Sooner if be, possible. So we're looking at November um, 3rd to get you the materials that we're talking about? Okay, thank you. Very good. Um, now a motion to close. Don't, you can't close. Oh, that's right, sorry, we just continue. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, thank you all. Uh, uh, that's the agenda that we have, unless Sarah, you have any other um, things that the commissioners need to uh, uh, The only really good news- Thank, thank you, I guess we're that, done. Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, the city received a $400,000 local acquisitions for natural diversity grant for purchase of the Pomeroy property, which is really exciting. Um, oh, that's awesome. Sometimes we have to wait almost until yeah. you know January 1st, but this was a wow. surprise announcement. So that was great. That's awesome. Great. Great. So Glad we'll to be hear. going to the Community Preservation Committee for the required local match uh, this upcoming round, but that reduces the request by quite a bit, which is great. Wonderful. Terrific. And I will also notice that I see David Reckow. Uh, David, I understand you're going to be joining the commission. There he is. Unmute myself. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, it's uh, a right. fascinating meeting. Thank you. Wow. Well, <laughs> welcome aboard. Uh, I think you'll be sworn in by the time this comes up. You won't be able to vote on this one. Um, okay. uh, I don't think, sir. Can he by watching the video or? I, does, he can't know because he wasn't sworn in for the first piece. for the first one okay all right but welcome aboard um, i'm glad actually you had a fairly meaty 
uh, <laughs> substantial case to listen to. Sometimes they're just, you know, simple and uh, like the first couple today were, but uh, sometimes they're much more complicated and interesting. Right, right. That, was, as a that was an exciting one, yeah. <laughs> Good. All right, so uh, motion to close. Any other discussion? No. Jen made a motion to close, so. Um, do we need a roll call to close, Sarah? Uh, no, that's okay. No, that's <laughs> okay. Just, let's get a second. Paul made a second? Yes. All right. Good. Thanks, everybody. Um, good right. to see you all. And all right. we'll be hearing more from these folks a uh, week or so before uh, we get together again. Great. Excellent. Right. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone.